Hey guys, this week's video is a little bit about this painting that I'm working on here. It is done in my Arteza watercolor book. This is the watercolor book that is 8.3 inches by 11.7 inches. I've talked a little bit about it in another video, so I'm not going to go into details about any of the specifics of this notebook. But as you can see, I started off with one big mistake. I didn't tape down my edges or clamp it down like I usually do um, and that is because I started recording before I was fully prepared. I didn't know where my bulldog clips were and once I started I just tried to keep going. I do not recommend it guys. Please don't um, follow my bad example. Anyways, so some of the things I wanted to cover in this video are a few of the art supplies that I like a lot lately. And I have talked about this palette, I think, before. This is just a Magello 18 Well palette that you can put together yourself. It comes empty and it has two mixing trays. There's a clear plastic tray in that big area that you can lift out with that white surface underneath. And then the 18 wells that you can fill however you want. The colors that I have in here are listed down in the description. Uh, they are a variety of brands, mostly the Windsor and Newton artist watercolors and Daniel Smith artist watercolors the two of my favorite watercolor brushes as of late have been some of my more recent purchases both of which are not very expensive at all the first one you saw me use was the Trukel quill mop brush it is a synthetic squirrel and I think it is awesome it is really nice size it's very comfortable very lightweight I like it particularly for laying down large areas of water or color and when I say large it's relative because I don't usually work larger than the size you see here when it comes to watercolor so for me that's just the perfect size the brush that I'm using for just about everything else in this picture is the Princeton velvet touch and it is in a long eight round and this brush is wonderful because it too is very inexpensive it feels good the handle the velvet touch series i like the texture on it um, but the best part about it of course is how it functions the size being a eight it has a not large but decent sized belly that holds a lot of color or water and it comes to a really super fine point which I absolutely adore because I don't have to swap to smaller brushes to do details unless I am having difficulty really controlling how much color or water I'm depositing. This one is just really nice to work with. I'm liking it a lot. The subject of this week's painting is a red panda. I chose to do this one because I, for one, absolutely adore animals. And there is a fun series on Netflix right now called Agretzko. It is a Sanrio cartoon based on the life of a red panda who obviously is anthropomorphized. And she is a enraged office lady who likes to do metal karaoke at night. So it's a lot of fun. I'm a big child. I really, really love Sanrio. Always have. I probably always will. Doesn't seem to be something that I'm growing out of. And every time I go to Japan, I like to look for more Sanrio treasures. One of the cool things I like about Sanrio too is like they seem to know that um, their fans are aging and they make some really nice, more adult looking items as well, like purses and wallets and stuff like that so it's a lot of fun it's really something that I like to collect regardless of age so on to more about the red panda unfortunately these cute little guys are on the endangered species list and they are endemic to the Himalayas and southwestern China areas these little guys when they were first discovered have been misclassified a lot so they were thought to look a lot like pandas, um, the large black and white bears um, from the same area because of their markings. Um, they have also been compared to raccoons, but really they're not that close um, in 
DNA or other key features to either. There's some overlap, obviously, with the their looks, the ring tail, the spots on their face, and these little guys actually eat a lot of bamboo as well. So a lot of overlap between those other two species, but they were classified to be their own with no living relatives for like the last several million years. Um, these cute little guys are also about the size of normal house cats, so they can weigh from like t 10 to 20 pounds. Um, the physical sizes they say are somewhere between 20 to 26 inches long from their head to their rump, and then their tails would be another 10 to 20 inches. Another feature that they share with the giant pandas is that they have a modified wrist bone that kind of acts like a thumb that helps them grab the bamboo like when they're eating. These little guys spend most of their time in trees to eat and both sleep and don't all really need to come down to the ground too much. They like to lay on the branches and they look so cute. Red pandas also groom themselves similar to cats. They lick their front paws and use them to wipe themselves. Female red pandas can have one to four babies at a time, and apparently they have twins quite frequently. Baby red pandas are called cubs, and their eyes and ears are sealed for the first two to three weeks of life. Again, very similar to cats. I thought these cute little guys would be a good creature to highlight right now because I thought it would be fun to just paint one but also share information about them since they are endangered. Their population has decreased by 50% in under 20 years and they think that's mostly because of us as, as usual encroaching on their habitat. Once this painting was finished with the watercolor portion, I went back in with a little bit of color pencil. I used the Prismacolor Very Thin to just give it a little bit more definition around the eyes and nose. And then I also used the white Signo Pen to give some highlights and bring back some of those whites in some of the hairs and whiskers. I also tried a little bit with the Sakura Jelly Roll because it is not as opaque, so I added a few little details with that pen as well. So there it is guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you would like to see me paint or talk about any other endangered animal, I would love to do more of these. Please let me know what you might be interested in seeing next. All the supplies and colors used are listed down in the description as usual with affiliate links if there are some applicable. 
Thanks for spending your time with me and happy painting, guys.